A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem Bismillahi rahman rahim This is chapter 19, Freedom of Religion. The definition of freedom of religion is the absence of coercion in the choice of religion. Quote, Let there be no coercion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects false gods and believes in God has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 256. Quote, If it had been your Lord's will, they would all have believed, all who are on earth. Will you then compel mankind against their will to believe? Holy Quran, chapter 10, verse 99. Quote, Say, the truth has come from your Lord. Let him who will believe it, and let him who will reject it. Holy Quran, chapter 18, verse 29. Quote, Whoever chooses to follow guidance follows it for his own good. Whoever goes astray goes astray to his own loss. Holy Quran, chapter 17, verse 15. Quote, to you be your religion and to me mine. Holy Quran, chapter 109, verse 6. Comment. Islam teaches that everyone has the right to believe in what they choose. Although there is a misconception that Islam allows Muslims to fight those with a different religion, this is totally false. Fighting is only allowed against those who are fighting us. Quote, Fight in God's cause against those who fight you, but do not overstep the limits. God does not love those who overstep the limits. Kill them wherever you encounter them and drive them out from where they drove you out, because persecution is more serious than killing. Do not fight them at the sacred mosque unless they fight you there. If they fight you, kill them. This is what such disbelievers deserve. But if they stop, then God is most forgiving and merciful. Fight them until there is no more persecution and worship is devoted to God. If they cease hostilities, there can be no further hostility except towards aggressors. Holy Quran, chapter 2, verses 190 to 193. Comment. Please note that all three of these verses repeat the message that Muslims are only allowed to fight those who are fighting them. And if those fighting them stop fighting, then Muslims must stop all fighting. Furthermore, Verse 193 does not mean that Muslims can fight non-Muslims until they convert to Islam. The late Sheikh Faisal Maulawi of Lebanon clarifies this by explaining that the persecution that Muslims were fighting against was the lack of freedom of religion, where one powerful group usually the king, imposes one faith and forbids citizens from choosing any other, just as the Meccans did to the early Muslims. Quote, This is a message from Muhammad ibn Abdullah as a covenant to those who adopt Christianity. Near and far we are with them. Verily, I, the servants, the helpers, 
and my followers defend them because Christians are my citizens. And by Allah, I hold out against anything that displeases them. No compulsion is to be on them. Neither are their judges to be removed from their jobs nor their monks from their monasteries. No one is to destroy a house of their religion, to damage it, or to carry anything from it to the Muslims' houses. Should anyone take any of these, he would spoil God's covenant and disobey his prophet. Verily, they are my allies and have my secure charter against all that they hate. No one is to force them to travel or oblige them to fight. The Muslims are to fight for them. If a female Christian is married to a Muslim, it is not to take place without her approval. She is not to be prevented from visiting her church to pray. Their churches are to be respected. That was the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, recorded in the letter to the monks of St. Catherine Monastery. This letter is a clear proof of the Prophet Muhammad's respect for freedom of religion.